Hey guys, so changing the text color of a text view as a whole is pretty easy. But in this video I want to show you how you can change the text color only of specific parts of a text. And as usual I will put a link to the code of this example into the description box. And let's start by making some slight changes to our activity main.xml file. All we want to do in here is giving our text view which we already have an idea with android colon idea at plus id slash and to keep it simple we will just call it text underscore view and that's it. Also we want to make the text slightly bigger with android colon text size and let's set this to 20 sp. And we will change the text to uh, I want this and this to be colored. And we will color the first this red and the second one green. We actually don't have to set this text here because we will set it in Java code later anyways, but this way this example is more understandable. And that's already it for our main activity layout. Now let's switch over into our main activity Java file. First we get a reference to our text view in our onCreate method. Text view we simply color text view equals find view by id r dot id dot and the id of our text viewer which was text underscore view semicolon. And now we need our text as a string. String, we simply call it text equals and in quotation marks, the same as we put in our text view, I want this and this to be colored. That's it. And now to change only specific parts of our text, a normal string is not enough. Instead we need the so-called spannable string. So we create a spannable string, this one here, and we call it ss equals new spannable string. And in here we pass our normal string, which we call text. And this spannable string is what makes it possible to change only specific parts of our string. In this example we will change the color, but we can also change the font for example, or the text style. Or we can make specific parts clickable. And I will make follow-up videos on these topics as well in the future. We want to change the foreground color. For this we create a foreground color span. We call it FCS. And we call the first one red, because we have to create two different ones. Equals new foreground color span, and here we pass the color in form of an integer. And we pass color with capital Z dot red, which is a predefined color constant. This is for our first word. Now let's copy this for the second one. We call it FCS green, and change the color to color dot green. And now we take our spanable string variable and call dot set span. And here we first have to pass the span itself. We start with our fcs red. Then we have to pass the start index and the end index. For this, let's take a look at our string. We start our index at zero. So the i is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want to start here at seven. So we add seven, comma. And then we have to pass the end index of the part we want to change the color of. 8, 9, 10. This is where we want to end. But it actually excludes the character at the end index. So we have to add one more to it. So we pass 11. Comma. And then we have to pass a flag. For which we pass spend.span exclusive exclusive. And this flag defines what should happen when we add some text to the start of the string or to the end of it. Inclusive means that whatever we put there will be colored as well, and exclusive means it won't be colored. And the first word here defines what happens to the start of our string, and the second word is the end. So we can pass for example span inclusive inclusive, inclusive exclusive, and so on, depending on which combination we want. In this example this doesn't play a role, so we just pass exclusive exclusive. And now we also want to set a span for our second word, so we copy this, paste it, we change this to fcs green, and for the indices we pass 16 and 20. And lastly we take our text view, call dot z text and pass our ss spendable string, just as we would do with a normal string. Pretty straightforward. So let's test it. And there is our colored string. The first word here is red and the second one is green. Now let's also set the background color quickly to this word here, colored. For this we simply create a background color span, we call it bcs yellow, equals new background color span and we pass color dot yellow. And the rest works exactly the same. ss dot z span, we pass our bcs yellow and the indices which are 27, 
and the 34 in this example. And again our span exclusive exclusive. So let's test it again. And there it is. This is a background color. Okay. Now a spanable string is immutable, which means that you can't change the text later. You can only change the styling. So if you want to change the text as well, then you simply have to use a spanable string builder instead. But don't worry, the rest stays exactly the same. So we create a spanable string builder, we call it SSB, equals new spanable string builder, and we pass our text string here as well. And then we can just use the spanable string builder the same way as we did with our normal spanable string. We change these three here and set our span on our builder. And that's it. But as opposed to our normal spanable string, we can now make changes to this text. We simply take our SSB and then we can call different methods like insert, append, delete and so on. We will call append and pass the text and this to be appended. And now of course we also have to pass our SSB here. Now let's see how this looks and if our spanable string builder still works. And there it is. Perfect. If this example confused you, then just take a look at the code in the description box. Play around with it and don't forget to subscribe for more intro tutorials. Take care.